Well, the UK just became the first nation to approve a COVID-19 booster vaccine targeting the Omicron variant. Here in the U.S., the FDA says both Pfizer and Moderna, they expect to have upgraded vaccines to do the same as early as next month. The Biden administration reached an agreement with the vaccine manufacturers for more than 170 million doses. The administration says that should be enough for everyone who wants them. Dr. Jake Scott joins us now, and he's an infectious disease physician at Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So do you think it's the right idea for these vaccines to be targeting specific variants versus the original COVID strain? Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? Um, but it's not completely clear. We don't have a lot of evidence that it's going to provide uh, a lot much more benefit. I think it's really important to, to keep things into context. So the primary goal of the COVID vaccines uh, and a lot of vaccines, in my opinion, is to protect against uh, serious illness, uh, to keep people out of the hospital and to keep people alive. Uh, the vaccines that um, we've been using so far, which have all been based on the original sort of recipe, if you will, uh, have been working extremely well against all variants when it comes to uh, that, that particular goal. So when it comes to protection against mild infection, that's going to be more short lived and that is going to depend on, on the circulating variant. So with the Omicron specific booster, yeah, I, I, I do think that it, it makes sense in terms of, you know, broadening our immune uh, responses, but it's it's going to be hard to, to know how much benefit beyond uh, protection against mild illness it will provide. Because with after, the, you know, a couple of years of research, we know that COVID mutates so quickly. Will the Omicron boosters work for all Omicron variants then? And what if a new strain emerges? Are we still protected with that? Right. So it, again, it gets to the question of what are you what are you expecting from the vaccine? When it comes to protection against serious illness, I would expect that the um, existing vaccines will continue to protect us against serious illness, regardless of the variant. Um, hopefully, you know, there's no guarantee, of course, but uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that protection will last for a long time. Uh, when it comes to protection against mild or asymptomatic infection, uh, it's really hard to predict. You know, um, we've we've learned, uh, you know, not to not to get ahead of ourselves because this pandemic has been um, fairly unpredictable, right? So Omicron is um, what we've been dealing with uh, since the beginning of 2022, but you know, it might be in our rearview mirror soon, and uh, an Omicron specific booster come this fall or winter might not be able to provide you know a lot of extra protection. But it's it's so hard to predict. Well, people who have been exposed to the virus no longer have to quarantine at home. So according to the CDC's new guidelines, what if we test positive? Should we still isolate for at least five days? And why do so many people continue to test positive even after those first five days that they're infected with the virus? Yeah, so the positive tests don't necessarily indicate whether or not someone will actually spread the virus, right? So um, there has been some studies that have shown that a majority of people actually test positive when using the rapid home tests um, after day five. So on day six, you know, um, some studies have shown that up to 75 percent of people are, uh, would still test positive. I'm sure that everyone knows someone or has themselves tested positive after day five. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will um, uh, spread the, the virus. Right. So um, there's even some data that shows that. Uh, people who do test positive on these rapid tests don't actually have um, virus that could be cultured, meaning virus that can't be be spread. So it's hard to know, but I think that the the important thing is that most people are going to be most infectious during the first five days. Um, so you know, the longer we extend the isolation period, I think the the lower the yield will be um, because you know after day five, the probability of someone actually spreading it could be quite low. It's it's hard to say. So it's important to pay attention to those first five days and, of course, how you feel with your symptoms. And I should also say for the, 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 the next five days, so for, for 10 days total, to just be a little extra cautious. So, you know, even if you come out of your home isolation after day five, um, it, it certainly wouldn't you know, hurt if you, if you could wear a mask for the, for the additional five days and avoid you know, high risk uh, settings, for instance. So finally, if you do get COVID and it's not a severe illness, what advice do you have to kind of manage the symptoms those days? Yeah, so basically, you know, most people experience a mild flu-like illness or, 
you know, a, a cold. So uh, the, the fundamentals uh, haven't changed. So, you know, staying well rested, uh, well hydrated, um, you know, avoiding alcohol if you can. Um, just, you know, the, the, the basics, treating symptoms with over-the-counter, you know, pain relief, uh, et, et cetera. There's, there's no magic bullet. Um, the antivirals that have been uh, proven to help for unvaccinated people might actually not provide much protection uh, or, or, or relief uh, for vaccinated folks. So it's really just the, the basics, um, taking it easy, you know, don't push yourself, stay home, uh, obviously, if you can, um, and uh, get lots of rest. All right. Well, we are learning more and more each day. Thank you, Dr. Jake Scott from Stanford Healthcare for being here. Thanks for the info. Thank you.